Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, this lecture uh, continues um, my few uh, series of lectures actually about light. In this particular case, we are talking about photochemistry, which is basically a combination of light and uh, electromagnetic oscillations and chemistry, and how this electromagnetic um, oscillation can affect the chemistry. This lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com. I do suggest you to watch this lecture and every other lecture from the website, uh, rather than from any other source you might actually find something like YouTube, um, because this is a course, which means there is a menu, it's a hierarchical menu. This lecture is part of certain chapter, chapter is part of the, uh, the part of the course, and uh, lectures are very much um, depend on each other. Um, so there is also Mass for Teens course on Unizor.com, which I consider to be a prerequisite to this course. It's a solid math course for high school and maybe a little upper, um, uh, maybe first year, year of college. But that's what you need to study physics seriously. Um, now, the website is totally free. Uh, you don't even have to sign in if you don't want to. Now, there is certain functionality of the website which depends on the sign-in name, um, but uh, again, it's totally free. There are no advertisement, no financial strings attached, no monetization, so just study and gain some knowledge. Okay, now let's talk about photochemistry. First of all, we are talking about light and how light affects the chemical reaction. Well, let me start with a very dramatic uh, statement. <laughs> if not for photochemistry, there would be no life on Earth. Because everything which grows around us uh, in the process of growing all these uh, trees and grass and whatever we have, they absorb um, light and uh, it actually affects the chemical reaction inside. It's a photosynthesis, it's called. That's how molecules are built. Um, that's how trees are growing. That's how uh, wheat is growing, I mean, everything. Now, there is also effect on human bodies. I mean, there were cases when people grew up without sun, and uh, obviously their development was significantly depleted. So sun is necessary, um, and basically it confirms that photochemistry is extremely important for life on Earth. So, number one, I wanted to exemplify this particular photochemistry kind of relationship um, in something which is called photosynthesis. That's how everything grows. Now, I did mention it before, but this is one of the few lectures where we will, ha we will have no formulas. Very rare occasion. <coughs> and it will probably be a very short lecture, too. I'll just exemplify certain photo reaction, photochemistry reactions, um, and again, photosynthesis is one of those. What else? Um, what else is uh -huh. generation of vitamin D inside of our body when our skin is exposed to sun? It's a clear example of. Uh, photochemistry. Now, to tell you the truth, I don't think we understand this process. I mean, we know what's happening, but to properly explain this generation of vitamin uh, uh, D, for example, or, or, or photosynthesis, I don't, th I don't think we have a clear 
explanation of how it actually happens. Because if we did, we might have been able to basically replicate it. We cannot. We cannot produce life. Generally speaking, whatever we think about life, whether it's a life, kind of animated kind of life, or, or, or a plant or something, we don't. We only can just use whatever we already have. Like we can take a branch of a tree and grow into a new tree, but that's not what, what I'm talking about. To understand how the process is made down to niche gritty of it means we can replicate it completely and we cannot. So, whoever created this life really did a very good job. Okay, what else as an example? Okay, um, we have used lots of plastic and we know that plastic degrades with the time. Why? This is example of photochemistry. Sunlight, when it actually um, uh, uh, when it actually directed onto plastic, gradually, you see plastic contains very long molecules, polymers, whatever, and under the sun there are certain chemical reactions which actually breaks um, a, a long molecule into smaller pieces. That's photochemistry and that's what actually happening with plastic uh, when uh, it degrades under the sun. You see something simpler than plastic, something like metal for example. It's a very short molecule, a couple of elements and that's it. But plastics are very long molecules uh, containing like carbon and uh, uh, nitrogen or something else. Now these long molecules are breaking under the sun. Now I promised not to have any formulas in this lecture. I will not have the real formulas but I will use certain symbolics to basically explain how the photochemical reaction can happen a little later when I will finish with all the examples I have. Almost finished. What else? Okay. Our eye, we see things. Now, what does it mean that we see things? Well, electromagnetic uh, oscillations, light, visible spectrum of life, of, of, of light, comes into the eye and it causes chemical reaction. Chemical reaction in turn um, excites the nerves uh, inside the retina, some, some, somewhere in the eye, and these signals are going into brain. So that's basically how we see things. And again, right in the middle of this is a chemical reaction inside the eye, which basically happens in response to light coming through our pupil and based on different picture whatever we see different parts of the retina are activated and based on different frequency of light uh, the activation has different degrees because there is different energy carrying uh, which is carried by the light so it actually causes different chemical reaction in different places of our retina. All these signals are going into brain and that's how we see things. And uh, the last which I have in my list, I mean, there are many, many different photochemical examples. Uh, solar cells, again, under the sun there is something happening in like probably it's a semiconductor, whatever is underneath um, of the transparent uh, covering and something happens, it's a photochemical reaction and as a result it produces electricity. Converting basically the energy of sun, which is carried by electromagnetic oscillations of course, waves, into certain um, other form of energy, in this case electricity certain amount of energy is lost, but certain amount of energy is still kind of used. Okay, 
now I wanted to talk about different um, it's a schematic representation of these chemical reactions how many different types of chemical reaction are possible so I will use components um, which participate in the chemical reaction just with letters A, B, C so one of the first things is A, B plus plus light now I have already mentioned a couple of times that light carries energy now before like at the end of 19th century um, physicists were thinking about light energy as infinitely dividable and it's like flowing well in a way like waves on the sea so it's a wave theory of light and uh, energy can be any basically it all depends on amplitude and uh, frequency in 1905 Einstein published an article which was actually um, considered to be true <laughs> or, or at least true at that particular time and ours uh, not until 1922 if I'm not mistaken like 17 years later people were very much inclined to the wave theory of light because it explains all these diffraction interfer interference etc etc however um, photoelectricity effect which I have addressed in the previous lectures was not uh, explained using pure wave theory because only specific frequency was able to um, kick electrons out of some metal plate so Einstein came up with certain theory that energy which is carried by oscillations electromagnetic oscillations um, cannot be infinitely divisible there is a minimum which depends on the frequency and the amount of energy is equal to uh, Planck constant times frequency of light now Planck constant came from Max Planck who was like I don't know, 10 years before um, Einstein was researching how um, heated objects emit the electromagnetic um, oscillations like for instance you heat a piece of metal and it's like red hot or even white hot so all these colors are basically uh, emitting of electromagnetic oscillations it's light right so Planck was ex uh, researching that and he actually came to this uh, we call it right now quantization of energy means that energy can all only be um, emitted or absorbed in certain chunks called quanta so it's a plural singular quantum um, so right now we are talking about this as a quantum of energy another word for this is photon which everybody heard so this is a photon this is basically light energy so what happens if something which contains two different elements consumes certain amount of energy well one of the reaction which can happen is this these two elements are separated so this is one type of photochemistry photochemical reaction so this chemical reaction AB to A plus B this is something like one molecule which contains two elements and these are two elements separately or a bigger molecule is separated into two smaller molecules like degradation of plastic under the sun so this is one type of photochemical reaction another type when you have certain molecule or element under the sun it just converts to another one another type of chemical reaction now the third 
1 plus B plus HF, which means you have two separate elements and uh, energy of light. It can convert to, we will combine these two elements and maybe there is something left over in some way. Now these are not formulas, don't take me wrong. The, I, I promise this lecture not to have any formulas. These are not formulas. I'm just trying to graphically explain what I was just talking about chemical reactions. That all kinds of different chemical reactions are possible based on this. Another, A plus BC plus HF. So there is a regrouping. Re a, B, plus C. So B being connected to C, now it's connected to A under the influence of um, light. And another one, I have two separate elements. I added some energy, and as a result, I still have two separate, animal, uh, two separate um, elements, but one would be positively and another would be negatively charged. So basically there is a separation of electrons, regrouping of electrons from one to another. For that regrouping we need some energy and that's the energy. So all these are regrouping of atoms and electrons between different elements or molecules and it's all done based on energy supplied by light. Okay, this is basically a very short lecture. Again, no formulas. These are not formulas. And I was just trying to explain how light actually affects the chemical reaction. That's it. Um, probably uh, next lecture we'll have formula. <laughs> I will try to explain basically a little bit more in more details. Um, how exactly these electrons are jumping from one place to another under the influence of um, light and how they can emit light if they are jumping into proper place. All right, that's it for today. I suggested to read no notes for this lecture. Basically, it's exactly the same which I was just talking about, no big deal. Um, but notes are on unizor.com. You go to Physics 14 course. Uh, choose the part which is called waves and uh, then if you open the next uh, page whatever comes up as a menu you will have photochemistry as a topic it's a very short topic so just you know familiarize yourself with it that's it for today thank you very much and good luck